All right, peace and greetings, YouTubers. Troy Davis, very interesting case, very controversial, very sad, big news media, Twitter, Facebook, blog, extravaganza that's been going on for the past few weeks. It's a case that's been going on for years. Very interesting, so I'm just going to quickly, well, not really quickly, well, I will see, but I'm going to talk about it. Um, I'm tired, so I don't plan on talking too long. Disclaimers, I don't feel like going through my whole speech, so I'm posted here, here, and here. If any of these apply to you while you do your comprehensive reading, turn this video off because you won't be able to sit through this. You're going to be trying to cuss me out and write all these paragraphs and essays that I'm not going to respond to. No, I'm not going to talk about OJ, so don't ask. Um, all right, Troy Davis. Assuming you've watched the case, I'm just going to get to my beefs. This case just goes to show why I don't support capital punishment. Now, unfortunately, we already have it in the U.S. So I'm going to tell you my beef that I have with capital punishment in the United States because in the United States, capital punishment is legal. And then the states have the right to choose whether they want to enforce capital punishment or not. And if those states do choose to enforce capital punishment or not, the counties within that state also have the choice whether they want to enforce capital punishment or not. So then you have these cases where you have someone that does this massive crime that's just heinous and they kill dozens of people and they get life in prison. And then you have another case where somebody may be in a different location and they do a crime where maybe they kill two people and they get the death penalty. So it's not fair and it's not balanced because some people are getting the short end of the stick. Now, I mean, hey, they all did the crime, but allegedly. But um, it's just something I don't think is fair and balanced. Case in point, Gary Ridgway, the Green River Killer, versus the D.C. sniper shooters. You look at Gary Ridgway. He was from Washington State. He killed 48 women. 48. Do you know how many women that is? That is like the whole cast of Golden Girls, Judge Judy, Nancy Grace, um, all 800 members of Destiny's Child that were kicked out, the Pussycat Dolls, if wherever they're at, Venus and Serena Williams, Brittany and Christina, um, the Olsen twins, the whole cast of Housewives of Atlanta. So Kim Zolciak won't be tardy for the party because she's not here anymore. I don't know if I got the 48 yet, but you add some people in and keep counting until you get 48. Add the soprano section from your church choir if you go to church and see if you got the 48 yet. But, um, you know, he killed 48 women. And at the time, the county he was in where all those bodies were found because he was only being charged in one of the counties... They don't do the death penalty, or I forgot how it works, but at the time it wasn't a capital punishment case. He got this plea bargain, and he was able to get life in prison as long as he showed the police where all the bodies were. Or he, I don't even think he showed them all. He found, the most, he found what he could find. So, you know, basically that was saying, hey, in King County, hey, if you can just kill a couple people, cut up some people, and you show us where the bodies are, you get to live. All right? Hey. But, um, and what was shady was, the only thing that saved him was none of those bodies were found in any other counties. Because had one body been found in Pierce County, Washington, which is just 20 miles down the road, he might have been hanging it up, all right? They would have been like, you know what, pack your things and get ready for your last meal because you about to get injected, all right? But then you look at a case like the sniper shooters. And yes, they killed a lot of people, and I'm not trying to say one crime is lesser than the other, but the sniper shooters killed about a fourth of the people that Gary Ridgway killed, and then the main person, I forgot his name, but you know, he, they gave him the death penalty. And the only reason the other boy didn't get the death penalty was because he was a minor. But, and it just goes to show how backwards and unbalanced things are. And then on top of that, that whole sniper shooter case was a mess, be mess because Virginia wanted to try them and do this thing, and then Maryland wanted to do something, and then D.C. wanted to do something. It was chaos. And I just feel capital punishment has to be fair and balanced. And I also think there should never be a case where there's any type of doubt in the capital punishment case because if there's doubt, you need to hold that capital punishment law, whatever. You need to hold that off. Hold the death penalty until we have confirmation that this person is guilty. Think of all the people that we have killed accidentally, you know, and the numbers, I don't, I don't think we'll ever be able to confirm who's been guilty, who's been not, but there have been a lot of people that have been falsely killed. And then this whole thing is, I just think... Of the Casey Anthony case, you know? Actually, no, I'm going to come back to your girl, Casey. But let me say it like this. This Troy Davis case, there's a lot of doubt in this case, all right? When you're the prosecution and you're trying to convict somebody of something, you are trying to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that this person did the offense. Maybe in 1991 when he was convicted, maybe they did do that. But at, you know, fast forward some years, all of your witnesses, seven out of the nine witnesses that you use, have all recanted their stories. And because there wasn't that much physical evidence, doesn't that mean... That your you know your say all be all that you were pushing the case for, meaning your seven and your nine or whatever witnesses, if all of them are changing their minds, doesn't that put a big circle and a cloud of doubt into that case now? And then there were also a lot of witnesses that were not interviewed, so doesn't that add in 
more doubt into this pool of doubt that we're swimming in. So I'm thinking, you know, with all this doubt, what do you justify as reasonable doubt? I don't think you can prove that the man is technically guilty at the point. I don't know if he's guilty or not, but I'm just saying with all the doubt floating around, you would think that they'd be like, you know, what, maybe we should hold off on killing you. And I think people need to understand that when you do a state of execution, that doesn't mean you get to walk free and you get to go skip and go to McDonald's. No, that just means we're not going to kill you at the moment. We're going to get you if we can still prove that you're guilty. But for the moment, you get to live. But um, I just, I don't know. So, and it, it's, it's a mess. And then when I think of reasonable doubt, I go back to Casey Anthony and that case there. Because, you know, allegedly, based off the courts and her not guilty verdict, you know, her daughter drowned in the pool. And, you know, she said, you know what, I'm going to do the morgue and the hospital and the funeral home a favor. I'm just going to bury my daughter down the street in the backyard in the swamp because, you know, I know it's hard to drive that hearse up this hill to come over here. So, you know what? I Yeah, my daughter died in the pool, so I'm going to just bury her myself next to the pet bird and the pet cat that died when I was six. You know, I'll just bury her in the back. It's cool, you know? And that's allegedly what happened. But my beef with that case is, you know, the defense had a very hard time trying to prove Casey Anthony's side of the story. There was so many loopholes. They never actually proved that little Kaylee drowned in the pool. Now, they don't have to do that because on the defense, you don't have to prove beyond a reasonable doubt. All you have to do is destroy the prosecution's case and put some doubt into their case, which they did do, which I don't condone. But um, I just, and, and then I feel like if you were a, a juror on that case, I'm like, what is beyond a reasonable doubt? What is your standard for beyond a reasonable doubt? Because if I'm on a jury, if I realize that there's this woman, her daughter's been missing for 31 days, and she didn't report it. That's enough doubt for me to understand. You know, that, that makes me think, you're up to something. And then, you know, Mother Casey, she blames it on, what was it, Zanita Gonzalez? I forgot the girl's name. I used to just think she was saying Yolanda, the same lady that killed Selena. So you blame it on some random person that doesn't exist or whatever. And then you keep lying about it. You keep saying, oh, we're looking for Kaylee, we're looking for Kaylee. And then out of nowhere, fast forward two and a half years while you've been sitting in jail, all of a sudden, your daughter drowns in the pool. That's the story you want to go with. That's a lot of doubt for me because we didn't hear anything about the daughter drowning in the pool. And why didn't you say that when you called the police the first time? Because that's all you had to say. And you could have just said, you know what, okay, I did, something, I did some crazy stuff, right? I wasn't watching my daughter. She drowned in the pool. I buried her in the backyard down the street in the swamp. But no, she didn't do that. So I'm, I feel like that's a lot of doubt. But somehow... The jury was like, no, th this is beyond a reasonable doubt. The prosecution just didn't have enough evidence, and we can't go off circumstantial evidence, even though that would put a lot of doubt in my little system here of thinking. So, I don't know what to tell you. I just think it's, it's, it's something that's not fair. And um, when we're dealing with killing somebody, it really needs to be confirmed. It needs to be concrete. I need, like, a solid case of evidence that the person did the offense, because... I'm not going to be the person that's going to be pushing the button to inject them with some poison if I don't think they did it or if I have questions about them doing Because you know his last words were, I'm not guilty. I'm innocent. You know, that's some creepy stuff. If I was a homeboy pushing the button and he said that to me, I'm like, man, y'all sure y'all want to do this? Can we do this tomorrow? Like, man, because I'm not even working tomorrow. Y'all can have Greg or whatever, whoever comes in after me. He can do this because I can't do this tonight, y'all. <sighs> but, um... That's my right. I'm being silly. I need to go to bed. And I'm really tired. Anyway, give me your comments on this one based on the case. Don't be coming here trying to insult me. I ain't got nothing to do with the case. All right. I'm not on a jury and I'm not, you, know, you didn't see me outside protesting. All right. So just give me your comments on the actual case. Try to keep it clean. There's a lot of stupid people on the internet and y'all can keep the N word jokes and OJ Simpson. We don't need to hear about that today. All right. Anyway, subscribe. Peace and greetings. See you later.